this whole thing of like money can't buy happiness. I actually personally believe it can. Hello and welcome to the Coots Beyond Success podcast. I'm your host, Laura Jackson, and I'm joined by our resident Coots expert, Greg Kyle Langley. And together we are lifting the veil on success and asking what comes next. Now, I am very excited to be joined by our guest today. She is a renowned entrepreneur with lots of awards under her belt. She founded the agency Seven Six. She's an influencer and a podcaster herself, so I better watch out. She's not afraid to spark important conversations such as the racial pay gap, diversity, and the culture of consumption. I am very excited to meet her and ask her what next. Charlotte Stavrou, everyone. Welcome. You have created an amazing agency, but what about Seven Six makes you most proud? I think just the fact that it exists. It's it's something I've been talking about recently. Um, Before I was asked to do this, I had different conversations around success. So when this um, podcast came up, I was like, oh, this is actually really relevant to the conversations I'm having. But um, the fact that I've built a business being the person that I am is actually quite like crazy. You know, if we look at the industry that I'm in and the agency landscape, the majority of agency owners are white men in their 40s to to 60s, not thinking about, you know, original like OG um, agency owners, but like the CEOs nowadays, Um, they don't look like me. They don't come from my background. Um, They don't have, like I'm a language graduate. Like I don't have any business experience. Um, I've very much been winging it for the last four years. Good, in good ways and bad ways. Um, So the fact that my agency is coming up to its fifth year, which statistically is like I'm beating statistics on a daily basis to get to three years um, was a, you know, a big feat for us. based on businesses that that fail after three years and we're five months away from six, uh, five years and that is really exciting but the way I've looked at success in the past has been to compare myself with other businesses but then lately I've been speaking to different people and I realized I can't compare myself to other businesses because I am we didn't start in the same place and I I don't think I'd I thought about that because I've been so like deep into we need to be successful whatever that means mm. And then recently my my mum said something to my husband that I'd not heard before and I hadn't thought about, um, which was that my mum, my mum and my dad, but obviously on my mum's side, she was the first person in her family to buy a house. And I had never thought about that. And then my brother was the first person in her family to go to uni. And then after that was my cousin, the mother cousin than me. And I was like wow, that's like pretty exciting. Like they've broken like generational patterns. And then my family, different people have had businesses, but I'd probably say that I have the most successful business out of everyone in my family. No offense to all of you, <laughs> love you. But like financially, yes. And um, that is, again, a pattern that's been broken. And the fact that, you know, I might, the business might not, if we compare it to other agencies, we might not, you know, financially be in the same place. I had to learn so much to get to where I am. And I hadn't, like, therapy really brought this out, but I hadn't thought about it in the sense that I don't, I don't have a mentor. I didn't have anyone to, like, tell me how to run a business. There's no real course. Because also I, I learn in a very specific way. So um, I find I've taken a few courses and I haven't been able to absorb information I think quick enough to understand what I actually needed to do. And until I've actually done the tasks, like now I'm doing a lot of um, finance things with our accountants so that I can take take it on myself. And I'm now like, oh, the thing I did two years ago in that operations course now makes sense. But I had to be hands on and do it myself. I, I don't learn by um, just like reading. Um, and this has been like a really big experience. And I'm very proud, long story short, I'm very proud that my business just exists. And what's it been like moving from when it was just you to now us? Do you feel a lot of responsibility for the, <sighs> the team? Do I? <laughs> I am every, I'm everyone's manager, everyone's therapist, sometimes like life coach, just like 
everything. I've always had an assistant. So I, I went freelance in 2018. And then when I launched the business, business in 2019, I think there was a month where I was on my own. But then I had an assistant really early on because I just knew I wouldn't be able to we got clients really quickly based on just my network. So I wasn't able to service the clients by myself. I knew that wasn't going to be um, a possibility. So I've always had someone. Um, and then over the years, we've always had, from 2020, we've always had between five and seven people working from the business. And now we're at seven um, again. But it's a lot. Um, I think... Sometimes I get really overwhelmed. Like I came back from holiday last week and day one I opened up Slack and it was, <laughs> hi Charlotte, so glad you're back. Uh, could you just approve this? Oh, I'm really glad you're back today because I, I wanted this to go live and I really want you to look at it because I, I want your your opinion. Or, hey, just now you're back, can I book a holiday? And did it. And I was just like, okay, I need to um, I need to go back on holiday. Or I just need to close my eyes. I don't want to see this. So it, was, it is really overwhelming. And I don't have, like any senior staff really everyone's kind of we're all at this there's no not really that much of a hierarchy in the business so and there's not enough of us to have you know lots of we don't have we have an external HR manager that deals with crises not like mm. everyone's like holiday bookings and things. so everything does go through me so that can feel very overwhelming but I am starting just now four years in to kind of balance that and understand how to take that on without it being all consuming in my life which has been a bit of a struggle over the few last few years to balance personal life and everyone else in my business and my business yeah because it's not just the work it's the people as well mm. well we'll come on to balance a little bit later because yeah. that is very important but I want to ask you about the influencer landscape because I feel like the word influencer has at times had negative connotations oh, yeah. but what do you think are the best things that have come out of it I personally love the influencer space. I'm biased because it's all I know. But um, I've worked in influencer marketing in you know, one way or another for about 13 years now. And I've worked with a lot of creators, thousands and thousands of creators. And I think I've met two or have had, or have had two bad experiences in my entire career. And everyone else has just been amazing. Um, the fact that influencer marketing or be being an influencer is... First of all, it's a, it's a generic term. So yeah. being an influencer, like I'm an influencer, you're an influencer, you're an influencer. Like Correct. the fact that we're <laughs> all, a it's a per, you're a person of influence and it's nothing to do with your following. It's nothing to like in terms of size. It's the fact that you have an audience that you can engage with and give them something, mm -hmm. be that um, content that's exciting or interesting or funny or content that is teaching them something that is you know a person of influence and I think it's important to recognize that we can all be influencers I know it sounds lame but we can and a lot of us are um but the press have done a really good job at making influencers seem to be horrible specific types of people who are kind of ruining the planet which you know some of them some of them maybe are um but yeah if we think about what's come from influencer marketing, we've completely changed how people consume not just content, but goods, like how we how we shop, our habits are, are different. We can be influenced to sign petitions. We can be influenced to, to, you know, give money to charity. We can be influenced to shop. Like there's so many things that influencers can do, be it good or be it um, kind of capitalistic focused. Like it, it works in so many ways. I've been influenced in the past to change banks to a more, you know, sustainable bank. I've been influenced in the past to sign a petition with Greenpeace. Like there's so many things that I've been influenced to do by influencers who have been paid. And I think that's something that we don't think about when we think of influencer marketing. And also the fact that it's such an accessible career that you can kind of, as long as you have a phone or a camera, you can kind of, and the internet, you can get into it. And most people do have that across the world. So it's it's not necessarily that the barriers aren't there you don't if you can't speak English um and you you can still reach a global audience you don't have to speak it's to do with how you um you know how you interact with your audience like you could be dancing you could be um there could be subtitles there's so many things you can do but I've seen people who have come from backgrounds where they literally have nothing they're like living this completely 
like normal life and then overnight have built this amazing audience and then have been able to buy a house for them and their family or they've been able to just start a career and build businesses and just build their lives when before they they didn't have access to that but because they had a phone they were able to just be the person that they wanted to be and it's such an accessible industry what does it feel like to have you know, you're the person that helps so many people have success mm. in an area they can just get into with a phone and the right kind of creative approach. What does it feel like to create that platform for people? I love it. I actually live for it. So I love one of my favorite things is going to like going for lunch with a creator or for coffee and then being like, right, this is what I want to do. But then they'll have no idea how to do it. And I'm just like, okay, <laughs> buckle up, lady. Let's go. And people are like, oh my God. But I, I have worked with so many creators and so many brands that I ha I've just seen so many different types of content mm -hmm. and I love content. Like I I actually do really enjoy my job and if I didn't do this job I'd probably still be doing it but just for you know another business or you know I'd still be in the space I think. Um I really love helping people just use what they already have but seeing potential um and then helping them act on that potential because I think sometimes you can be like oh I really like to do makeup but um and I want to be an influencer and that for some people that can be it that's all they need and then they can just create content but some people I meet and I'm like oh you're a makeup artist but have you ever thought about posting videos on the internet because yeah. you've just done this to my face and um I didn't know how to do that and I would watch that content and maybe pay you for a masterclass if you did it online and it was, you know, an accessible price for me. And they're like, no, I've never thought about it. You know, it's just little things that you maybe don't think about. Um, but we all have the ability to give something. I think people, if we had a chat, they'd they'd realize that there's so many things you could do on the internet. Um, what gives you the biggest sense of success? We've talked about, yeah, some of the kind of the proud moments, but what what do you associate with success? Oh, I think there's different areas of success. The other day, um, two, one of my team members said like, oh, I was walking down the street and someone recognized me. I was like, what? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, they just, they were like, oh, you're from seven, six. And then one of the girls was like, oh my God, that's crazy. And she was like, no, but that happens to you as well. You go to an event and they're like, oh, you know, it's Alia from seven, six. And people know you and they were like, oh yeah, like the team gets recognized in the industry mm -hmm. because we're weirdly like well known. We're not like, like we don't have the biggest social media numbers, but I think we do a lot. We do a lot of talks. We do a lot of um, like cool things. So people know who they are, but just like random people on the street just be like, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> that I find not, not me, but the team members, I find that really, really exciting. And I feel like very successful that I've built a brand that's me as the the face, but I'm not the one that's always being recognized. It's other people. Sometimes I don't even, like I could be, I was at an event recently and an, an influence, influencer was really rude to me because they didn't know who I was. And I was like, I'm literally paying for you to be here. <laughs> but I was like, okay. Wow. And it's funny because they don't know because I look really young as well. And if I, I haven't like, if I'm like- How does that make you feel though? I mean- It makes me laugh because I'm just like, I won't work with you again. That's that's fine. It's only happened twice, but I was like, mm. but um. That, yeah, that's one side of success. But then the other side is like, feeling like I can do, just do things, do things for my family, do things for my friends. And like, it's not even like, a lot of it's not financially motivated, it's network motivated. Mm -hmm. So if like, one of my friends recently was like, I really wanna go to this this conference. And I was like, oh, I'm speaking, you can have my ticket. Um, You could just be my like plus one. And they were like, oh, and then something else happens. And I was like, oh, well, I know the founder of that company, so I'll just get you a, you know, a free invite. Or like I have such a great network that I'm able to like tap in and help my friends and family do things. Um, that makes me feel successful. Yeah, network is so powerful. It's really underrated. And I think that if you aren't from a particular background or maybe you didn't grow up in London or you haven't got mm. access to these people it's really hard to find a network and I think someone once gave me some really great advice that was just find all of the other people that are on the way up with you rather than looking for like a mentor or somebody that's already been there yeah. and done that find those people that that become your family that become your network and all help each other and and then 
g- you know, go up the ranks together. Because I yeah. think that lots of people think, oh, I just need that mentor. But actually it's finding the person that you're, the partner that's on that journey with you and doing it together because you know, as two people, you're powerful, then you get a third, then you get a fourth, yeah. then you create create your own network. Don't wait to join somebody else's. Absolutely. So this is the part of the show where we ask our guests to be very vulnerable and reveal what is in their notes. Now, this app for me really is getting into the psyche of an entrepreneur. So I want you to get out your phone, if this is okay, and share with me what was your latest note. I know that you've got a lot of notes. Yeah, so I'm a <laughs> serial note taker. Sure. So I've got 3,121 notes on my phone, which I didn't realise was a lot. Because I I just thought everyone had like random notes, but apparently that's quite high. That's quite high. Yeah. I've got a note called Life. (laughs) Um, What's it about? (laughs) It's about me. So (laughs) it's just a lot of questions. And it's a bit, uh, it's, it's actually a very good insight to my brain. So Life. And then it says, who do I want to be? And then I've listed who I want to be. So I've put organized um, because I can be a little bit chaotic and a little bit. I'm not unorganized, but I have a lot that goes on. So I take on a bit too much. So organized is a big one. Carefree because I worry about a lot. Um, Fun because sometimes I can be very boring because I just think about work all the time and I talk about work all the time. So I don't want to constantly be that person. Um, loving and I put that because I feel like in the past I've been so focused on work that I've forgotten about the people around me my family my friends Um, a good one for this one great with money perfect Uh, because I don't think I am (laughs) I'm not great with money Um, my business is great with money because I'm scared to do anything wrong. Like my, my accountants know I'm petrified of HMRC. I've never done anything wrong and I want it to stay like that. Um, but personally, I, I don't think about money in like a logical way. So yeah, I need to be better and reliable. It's something that I think I am, but I just want to continue being like, I want to be that person that my friends feel like they can rely on me no matter what. Um, in any situation, call me, I will be that person. I love that the start of this, though, gives me really a really good insight into the person that you are, because most people would write a list based on tangible assets. What mm. do I want? Mm. I want to have a house and this car. But you've wrote about the person that you want to be. Yeah. And that, for me, just makes me just want to give you a hug because that is just <laughs> the loveliest thing ever that you you it's so important to you to be mm. reliable to other people. I think that is just really great my therapist has done a lot of work over the last two years and I think it's post therapist list (laughs) yeah it really is she actually asked me to do this because I think I've been feeling a little bit lost I think when you're an entrepreneur and you're so focused in your business it's so easy to get lost in what's right because you have you know I've got a team of six people who are um relying on me for everything and then I've got my family and my little family my nephews and my godson and my and my niece my nieces and then I've got my husband and then I've got his family and it's like there's just so many people in the world and you just it can feel really overwhelming sometimes to think how can I be of service to everyone but also to myself and there's that balance of losing yourself basically killing yourself to make everyone happy versus how do I make myself happy because you can't make other people happy if you're not happy yeah and I mean that was that was what I was thinking as you said carefree carefree isn't a classic thing associated with many entrepreneurs no. but but I think there is something about success isn't there that you know the more that you build and the more that you've done and the more that you have around you whether it's people or money or whatever it is the more that you have responsibility for and so yeah. something we talk to lots of uh, our clients and other people we come across about is this thing that as you go towards this great goal whatever it is there's never going to be a moment where you're carefree because you'll you'll worry about other stuff instead. Yeah. So, but um, but the, the, all the other bits completely resonate with some of you know the most successful people that we've, we've worked with. They are those things, and it's um, We're on the right track, ambition. guys. Yeah, We're on the right track. <laughs> and then yeah, the other bits about who do I want to be? Um, I want to create smooth and seamless processes. Um, I want to angel invest. And work and inv- and invest in exciting startups. I meet so many people that do amazing things, and I'm like, oh my god, I want to help you, 
but I don't have my my life together enough to be able to do that right now. But I want that to be a goal of mine to be able to help other people because my journey has got me here and will get me further. And I want to be able to share that with other people. But this is fundamentally also what you're doing through your agency. Yeah, I mean, you're, yeah. you're like an influencer VC already, mm. effectively, yeah, I guess for everything so. you do. You are yeah. not investing money, but you're investing actually something that's way more valuable. Mm. You're changing people's lives. If someone said, you know, the fact that you said, oh, you're a makeup artist, have you thought about doing X, Y, and Z? Like you're giving people tools, not mm. so that they're even reliant on you. You're giving people the tools so that they've got their own toolbox to be able to change their lives. That is really empowering. That's more empowering than money. I haven't thought about that. Okay. Put that in your notes. This is like a therapy session. <laughs> therapy session itself. So you've given us great insight into where you've been and where you are now. This is a big one. But what is next for Charlotte Stavrou? I think about this constantly. This is actually the exact moment I am in my life right now. So I've mentioned I'm essentially at ground zero. So I've spent four years building this business and we've, I'm a marketer, so we've had great press. We've we've really marketed ourselves well, but as a business internally, the structure's not been great. Um, now we're fantastic. So next is building on that. So I want to build a business that I can feel proud of. I can continue to feel proud of, but also that I can leave if I want to go and have some kids. I'm at the point in my life where I, I really would love to start a family. So I would, and also as an entrepreneur and a solo founder, which I don't think gets talked about enough, solo female founders, the thought of leaving your business to start a family is really, really scary and sometimes can feel almost impossible. Yeah. And I am trying to set up my business so that I can do that and not feel that I have to come back after six weeks or somehow continue to work whilst starting to you know bond with my child um and I, I just really want to build something that that works but there's a couple of things that's really hard to replicate from your head that is that is often on the mind of founders that start stepping back and one is having someone or a leadership team that's going to be as driven as you to push the business forward even though they don't own it yeah um but then also the cultural point is really important so you know it's your business you've made it the way you want it to be when you're, as you step back, thinking about how you can still influence the culture and make sure it stays the business that you're proud of, is there anything in there that you've been thinking through or trialing out yet? Yeah, so culture is a really big thing. I think, again, having my sister be so high up in the company really helps because we are, we are very different people, but we're also the same person. Like, we come from a very specific family. Our parents are just, they're like super liberal and super free and can do whatever you want. They're all about like, culture, community, friends, and every single person in my family, I'm one of four siblings, we all have that kind of mindset of like, we love family, a family isn't just our blood, it's the people that we bring in. So my sister Rihanna can instill that within the business. I don't believe she's going anywhere, so please don't go anywhere. Um, but <laughs> okay. she's able to push that culture of which is like that strong Williams culture, my maiden name. And where do you see the business then in the next five years, for instance? You've talked about kind of the immediate future of trying mm -hmm. to find somebody to have the business while you go off and have a family. But yeah. then when you come back, what does the next five years look like? I've been thinking about this a lot and it's quite scary thinking about it. But I do think I'd like the business to, to grow. So we're bootstrapped. We've never had any investment. Um, and I don't... Which is incredible in itself. So well done. Amazing. Thank you. It's been really... <laughs> In all honesty, for a lot of time, it's just been a bit confusing because I hadn't really understand how the finances work. I just went on my gut and just knew like, this much is coming in, this much coming out, so we, we should be fine. But now I'm like, oh, I know how. Yeah, we were fine, but, <laughs> you know, touch and go. Um, but I really want to continue that. I don't actually think agencies need investment unless they want to go into like the tech world, unless we want to like start an app or whatever. I don't think we really need a massive cash injection because your injection is your clients. Like we're a digital business and our overheads, we're a very lean business. I, our overheads are so low. And because it's the influencer marketing world and I'm an influencer, my brain doesn't work in like, oh, it costs this much. It's like, oh, you have this, I have this, let's exchange and not pay for things. And then we can just 
have a mutually beneficial agreement rather than paying for things. So I want to continue that because I think it, it makes us more innovative. It makes us more exciting because we get things through, again, community and network. Um, and not because we're asking for favors. I've actually, in my entire career, asked for three favors. One of them was yesterday and they said no. And I was like, this is why I don't ask for favors because this is what happens. But I've never asked anyone for a favor but there's always like a, a mutually um, beneficial moment there. Um, but I would love for the business to be acquired. I don't think we need, yeah, that cash injection, but I'd love to work with another agency or another platform maybe that has the same love for what we do um, and an interest. They won't have the same passion because I don't think a business, a big business, I see a lot of massive agencies that talk about DNI and representation and all of these things. And I don't think they can have the same passion for it because their founders aren't someone like me or they have generally they're not they haven't come from a background that needs um needs that push. Um but I'd love someone who's thinking about it and then we can then help like be that kind of stamp of yeah, yeah this is real. Let's spin forwards then. You get acquired. Um, you're beyond success. What What do you look back at? Well, A, what does life look like then? B, oh what have you learned from this industry? What do you think you'll have learned from this industry at that point? Okay, so if I look back, I think I'd hope that I'd be really proud of that journey because I am really proud of the journey that I've taken. And it's taken a long time for me to say that mm -hmm. because it's been so hard in it that I've been slightly embarrassed by the journey. But now speaking to my family and my husband and my therapist and unpacking the journey, I'm like, wow, I'm really proud of what I did because that is not a normal journey for, you know, my background. Um, and when I say my background, I, 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 I want to be clear, I didn't, it wasn't like a hard upbringing. It was just this, was never on the cards. Like no one was like, oh, you're gonna start like a, you know, six, seven figure business in your like late twenties and then, you know, travel the world and give talks and keynote speeches to hundreds of people on a monthly basis. Like I never thought like that would be on my cards. Um, so if I look back, I hope to be excited and, um, and proud. Um, and then I hope that my life feels organized <laughs> and carefree uh but and no fun and loving and yeah and loving and everything and reliable <laughs> and everything I put on my on my notes but I hope that I feel really content um because that pursuit of happiness is especially for entrepreneurs is so real it's like every time you get somewhere without gratitude and until recently my friend basically sat me down a few months ago and was like you really need to practice gratitude and I was like what do you mean? She was like, life is hard, but you're making it harder because you're just not thinking about what you've achieved and, and how you got there and, and who you're with. And, and I was just like, ah, oh. and it's just being so deep in the negative sometimes can really mm. spiral you into like someone that you, sh you shouldn't be. Um, so yeah, I hope I feel grateful for, mm. for where I'm at. I think that that's the weeds of the business though. And you get so stuck in the kind of mundane business yeah. stuff that actually you're forgetting about the fact that you are closing this racial pay gap. You are changing diversity. Mm. You're looking at the culture of consumption and you're making a change. And actually, because you're probably doing the HR stuff or yeah. the like the finance stuff, and that's kind of the everyday weeds of the business that, but what you're moving the needle, um, like, you're, like the legacy that you're creating is huge and you should that that is what will be your legacy and I think that that is just something that I sometimes find the word proud is a bit cringy but yeah. you know that is something that you have done like you yeah. have done and that's brilliant I mean that's weird, that's so important for yeah. um especially business founders to recognize I think it's that thing we talked about earlier that you know you're, you've created this platform for other people to access a whole new industry and really succeed in it. Even those who never even thought of entering it, you know, you've got this uh, accelerator, this like a um, influencer startup accelerator, basically. But then on top of that, and not to add on to your responsibilities and take away your carefreeness, but the people who you've created jobs for, you know, you bring in money that puts food on their table. Mm, yeah. And 
the bigger that team gets, the more that responsibility becomes. As they start having kids, that then becomes families that you're supporting and responsible for. Right, you're taking away this carefree thing. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but it's but, but it's an amazing thing to be doing in this world. It's that's that's what the legacy is all about. Going back to the things I'm most proud of, something I am really, really proud of is that if I look if you looked at my team, it doesn't look it looks like what the agency world are really trying to create. Like that whole like DNI tick boxing exercise. But it's not because I made it so. It's because people come to me um, for work who look like me or look like my friends or look like my cousins and they see themselves wanting to work for a business like mine. Mm -hmm. And I'm so, so proud. Even at the beginning when we didn't have that much money, but we needed staff. So we were like, okay, we can't pay like um, salaries, but we could do um, like freelance internships. And then, you know, as we get bigger, we, we can bring you on. And we, and we did. I just hired people that were in my network, people that I knew. And I was just like, you're really good people. I trust you. You're going to get the job done. You have an interest in the field. Cool. If you want it, I can give it to you. But I can't pay you a lot. And but I can give you a lot of responsibility, but in probably things that aren't exciting. Mm. And, and there are so many people now that that I get work from them as a business. So I've employed them <laughs> and now they're my clients. Because at the, at the beginning, my network was black women because that's kind of all I really, really knew. Black mm. and black mixed race people. Um, so I've like brought them into an industry that people are actively trying to find young black staff members, but they can't find them because hiring's so difficult. But I've made it easier because I've trained them up mm. in the seven, six standard and then moved them on. So I'm really proud of that. It's something I, I don't often think about, but every time like I'll see them win an award or they'll do something at work, I'm like, oh my God, they started with us. Like, yeah. that's really cool. You're a massive part of their journey. That's really, that's quite cool. Oh, that is really cool. Would you agree that happiness comes with success then? I think it can and it can't. And I don't know in the entrepreneur world what the general consensus is, but this whole thing of like money can't buy happiness. I actually personally believe it can um, because when you don't have money and I see, like I've never not had money. My family have always, even if we didn't have money, they've never told us like as kids. So I've never known what that looks like. I'm very grateful to my, my parents for like always protecting us. But um, I've seen what, it's like from the outside people who don't have money and they are not happy. I'm currently um, working with with a family and like they can't even afford to put carpet on in their um, in their house and there's mold on their walls and like they've got kids. Like they're not happy. They're like just trying to survive. You don't have that if you have money. Like even if you have, like I, I'm not rich. I have some money. I'm way happier. I probably believe than, than, than they are because they're in like fight mode. But then I don't think happiness is dependent on money. I think it just helps things become easier. Um, for me, happiness and success. I'm always happier when my business is more successful. My husband always tells me when the business is in a, in a good place, you are the happiest. Um, but I think value is a personal thing. So whether that's like your your financial goal, mine isn't very high for my like personal life to be able to live a good life. So I think I could be a lot happier than maybe someone else who is striving to be a multimillionaire. And that's like, that's what's going to make them happy. That might actually make them happy. I, I, I don't know. Everyone's different. But in my opinion, yes, success does make me happy because I know what it's like to feel unsuccessful and I have not been happy. How do you get that work-life balance? Do you think that you've got it? Yeah, I'd like to say yes, but I, I don't think work-life balance is a thing. I, I, I honestly don't. I think there are different types of people who can take on different stresses. Um, I take on everybody's stress, and I, that's just me as a person. I, I'm, I'm like an absorber. I absorb everything. So I can't, um, I could be on holiday, but I will still be thinking about the fact, you know, the 80s due, uh, someone's asked for a pay rise. I need to do that development development meeting with with a, a team member to ensure that you know I'm getting the best out of the business. I want to uh, be in certain places 
personally, like in my personal development, but I'm not there yet. So my brain is always ticking. And some people can go on a holiday and just be like, I'm having such a great time walking along this beach thinking about nothing else. When I am having a great time, but the back of my mind is, is constantly. Um, and that is just who I am. Like that is how my brain works. And because of that, I'll never have a fully balanced life. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because I also thrive on being busy, being excited by work. Like I don't do my job because I have to, I do it because I, I like it. If I wanted to, I think it's really important. I always remember this. If I wanted to have lots of money and live an easy life, and I'm not saying creators have an easy life, but I know how the creator world works very well because I've made a business out of it. I would be a full-time content creator. I would work for myself, I'd have a PA, and I would make lots and lots of money on brand deals and work with brands that I like, and I'd have a podcast and I'd do all these little things, and I would feel really, really content. Um, but I've chosen a harder life where all my money goes into paying stuff, <laughs> and I have a long-term goal that will reap the rewards I hope that, that I want, but um, it's I've played long-term versus short-term game, which, which is fine. Um, but that makes me happy. And I probably could be happy if I was a creator and I could still talk about the pay gap and I could still do those things. But I don't think I'd be as excited. And I don't think I'd, like, I, I think I like the struggle. I think lots of founders have a similar view to it as you because A, there's a thing about the entrepreneurial mindset, but there's also this thing of, you know, it might be your goal one day for the business to not need you anymore. But for now, if you're not worried about stuff that's going on in the business, the business doesn't need you. So, you know, people need to feel like they've got this sense of purpose and the, yeah. the business they've created needs their decision and needs their thinking. So that seems right. Mm, good. I'm on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're moving towards the end of the show. But before we wrap things up, what would you say to the Charlotte of 10 years ago? If you had some life advice for her now, what would you say? Give her a heads up and be like, right, babe, it would be really helpful if you could just do like a mini MBA, maybe a business course. Um, if you could make some friends <laughs> who are really, really wealthy and then can give you insight to what, you know, life could be like. Or if you can make some friends who are um, like entrepreneurs starting in a very similar space who will start in a very similar space to you in 10 years time, that would be great. Because my journey has been really lonely and it's also been really um, like hard in the sense that I've had to educate myself so much because I haven't asked for help. Basically everyone I know now, if I just knew them then, then that would probably open my eyes a little bit better. But we can't turn back time, can we? So yeah, we struggled. Um, Charlotte, we're going to ask you to share a couple of future goals and Greg is going to advise you on them. Wow, okay. <laughs> on the on spot. On the spot. Here we go. <laughs> right, so my first goal that I'm really trying to make sure that I achieve. At the moment, I'm thinking as, as a business, I think I want to be acquired mm -hmm. in two to three years. How would I go about that? So there's a couple of... There's a couple of key things thinking about what the getting ahead out of you as the business owner and thinking about what would the acquirer be thinking about. Mm. They want to see really fast growth. They probably want to see what's the unique thing that your business gives them access to that they can't build themselves. Okay. Um, and then I think the thing that's really important for you is a bit of what we touched on earlier, which is something that lots of entrepreneurs talk about, which is the closer they get to that moment of the deal, they start thinking about what they're leaving behind and the legacy. And so writing down your red lines on two bits, as you step back from the business a bit, what will you not allow the business to turn into or where must it never go? But then also, if you're going to be acquired, what are your red lines around that? What must the business never be part of or never turn into in the very far future? I think those, those taking the time now when it's dispassionate and you don't have to worry about it is so powerful because it gives you a greater sense of yourself and what you care about around the business. Yeah. But it also means that as you start hopefully getting approached by people or you start going out to people to be potential acquirers, you know who to steer completely clear from, you know who to zone in on, you know who to say, look, there's, not, there's no point us even talking. 
and you can build in the right kind of advice around you to um, figure out how you navigate those red lines. That's really good. I never thought about the red lines because yeah. that's something I'm always, I'd like to be acquired, but like, I don't, couldn't think of an agency or a mm. business that I'd actually like to be acquired by. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's a really good place to start. Great. Thanks. Charlotte, thank you so much. It's been really great to get to know you. And I'm sure I can speak for um, Greg as well. We are very much looking forward to the future of 7-6. Massively. Thank you. And to those at home, thank you so much for listening, watching. Don't forget to follow and subscribe so that you can check in on our next guest. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>